Hello my soccer universe! It seems a little bit odd, but both the Czechs and the Slovaks had their own surprising rise in a way. Uh, not sure if I would say rise, but uh, got wins. Maybe the Czechs not as unsuspecting as the Slovaks in the end, but that the two neighbors are now uh, making a dent into the tournament, I think is to me uh, surprising. I think that's, that's the best way uh, to put it for sure. Uh, I did not, especially from Slovakia, and I have to um, apologize when I made my churches where I say Slovakia is probably the team that should not be there. Um, they proved yesterday that they belong there, and uh, especially when I think about Skrinja, yeah. And of course, Schick scoring the goal of the tournament. It is early on that we, th we had already uh, two great goals yesterday, but that one takes it even up a notch. Can this be beaten? We have to see. I mean, everything is not judged. This is probably one of the moments of this tournament. And speaking of the Czechs and the Slovaks, I have one last surprise. We'll talk about their games, but there's one last surprise at the very end of the video that I think uh, will top this video quite nicely. Up. And then we had Spain doing Spain things against uh, Sweden. I think uh, it's the best way to describe that game yesterday. Although it was not as boring as it could have been because there were some kind of funny actions in there. Let's get into it. Uh, we'll start Scotland uh, against the Czechs. I have to say this was a uh, rather even affair for most of the time. I mean, it was not as great of a game as we saw yesterday in the uh, evening, or the day before in the evening between the Ukraine and the Netherlands. Um, however, I thought Scotland over had not, uh, was maybe even the more active team. I don't want to say better because uh, you, you, you can see with the Czechs, uh, they, they have maybe a little bit more talent. What uh, really hurt probably with Scotland is that Tierney wasn't there, so you, you, you didn't have the double wing with Tierney and Robertson. Uh, first chance fell to uh, Schick. Uh, Robertson had a pretty big one early, uh, yeah, early on, uh, somewhere around the third minute. Um, but then when you just thought the game will go in with a goalless draw into the half, where um, maybe the Scots would look... Uh, it's very nice. Then from a corner kick, I think it was uh, Suchek who placed the ball out to Zufal, who then crosses from the other side from where the corner uh, kick was taken, crosses it in and Schick uh, with our class header puts it into the net. And so the Czechs playing in their yeah, Puma jersey. Puma is really ruining this tournament for all of us. Uh, get uh, Take a 1-0 lead. Start of the second half, it's all Scotland. Scotland are uh, having chances, uh, uh, most notably through Henry, who hits the bar, who he came in for Tierney. Uh, then uh, there was an own goal alert where Vachlik made a really great save on that just a minute later. Uh, and so you think, yeah, the Scots are now taking it to the Czechs. The problem is that uh, by having so much spirit uh, going forward, Henry uh, felt good about himself. Ha having just hit the bar, uh, takes shot as deflected right on the path of Schick, who already noted before that um, a, Scot a Scottish goal goalkeeper was off the line and he lobs him from over 50 uh, meters out. Wonderful goal. Uh, it was not one of those where you just try to hit it. No, he hits it with technique. It was almost a golf shot where I think uh, initially you think it goes uh, way past the goal and then it curls nicely in. It was also helped the uh, aesthetics that the um, keeper was running into the net. Uh, absolute fabulous goal and more or less killing off the game at that point. Yes, Scotland had a few chances, and na namely I think in the 66th, but the Czechs could have well made it 3-2 and so yeah, it ends 2-0 for the Czech Republic. Um, and I think the Czechs will actually like the chances at the moment because now next is Croatia in a do or die game and if the Czechs can keep up that pace that they have been showing right now, um, you know, being a star star team and hitting uh, at the right times, I, I also think they can get a result against uh, Croatia and then um, it's uh, do or die for Croatia against uh, Scotland late on. So. Got to see that. Scotland, of course, will now hope that they can get something against England and make it a little bit more interesting there. Maybe let's look at the standings for uh, Group D. Um, at this moment, as I said, we have the Czechs uh, 
ahead of England at the moment, looking rather good, I have to say. So uh, I, I think Czechs and England, maybe Croatia has a chance. We have to see. I think Lord will hang, uh, will hinge now on the Czech Republic playing against Croatia. For Scotland, this was maybe their best chance to get something. But, you know, maybe they can surprise against England. Okay, moving on to Group E. Um, the game in St. Petersburg, I call it before, it's either super boring or uh, there will be a lot of talking points. I think it was a little bit of both. In a rather unremarkable first half, I was really dis dis disappointed uh, in how Poland were playing. I think the best thing about this game was the jersey matchup. I really liked those Poland jerseys against the dark blue Slovakia jersey. Not this beauty, uh, but you know, I think uh, Slovakia and dark blue, it always looks good. So that was nice, um, but it was a little bit of tedious. I don't say it was a tedious watch because I had, 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 had it on, but I was doing uh, quite some work programming here. So, you know, I had it. I was aware of the game, but I listened to it more than I, I saw it. Um, however, the big one was uh, the big uh, divide in the first half was uh, this singular action of Mack who on the wing uh, take, takes a few po uh, Polish players, uh, not makes them, then takes a shot. Uh, it is deflected, I think, by Glick onto the post, uh, then hits the, uh, the head of Chesney and it goes in. It's called Cousin Ongol for Chesney. I think the credit all should go all to Mack, to be honest, but it was one of those messy goals. It was actually a little bit befitting the game. Yes, there was uh, what Mack did was great. But in the end, how the goal came about, it was a little bit more on the messy side. Uh, there were, of course, uh, two yellow cards as well, which we have to mention, because one of them was very uh, important, for one for Krikowiak. Uh, you know, attacking foul in the middle of the park. Uh, coming out of the uh, halftime, Poland really kind of took everything that they did bad and they really said, okay, we need to step it up and step up, step, step it up from the get-go uh, and, and, and a really nice attack uh, over a few stations. It comes to Ribos who plays to Linetti, who gets his foot on there. It was not really a shot. I actually thought it was, it did not look good on, on the Slovak goal, goalkeeper and it goes in internet or in the 46 minutes. I think it was only 30 seconds or something like that played. And from that moment on, I felt that, yeah, Poland might actually turn this around because they looked a whole lot improved. It still did not look right and it does not help that Milik and uh, Piontek will, uh, will not be playing the tournament. So it's kind of um, Lewandowski out on his own. But then I look at this lineup and there are really good players in there. Uh, Many players that play in Sierra, I mean, especially Zielinski, who is for Napoli, uh, really one of those players uh, to uh, to watch. So I honestly don't quite get why they cannot get the enough service to Lewandowski. It, it seems disjointed in many, many ways. And it, and it doesn't help that Krikowiak steps uh, a Slovak player on the foot and gets a second yellow card. Yes, I think it was harsh to send him off. Uh, Seeing both fouls on balance, this was definitely harsh to send, to, to send him off. And I said you have to be a little bit more careful. It is covered by the rules. But yeah, I, fa I, found, I found it a little bit harsh. And that actually gave the Slovaks the break because at that point, uh, Poland was really uh, in control of the game. And then, yeah, Hamši Korna and Skrinja will like a center forward. Takes the ball down, turns around his own axis and puts it in, 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 into net. 2-1 for Slovakia, and it was smooth sailing up until the end when uh, then Bednarek and Swiderski had pretty good chances to make it to 2 which probably would have been deserved, but yeah, Poland in trouble. And I heard this morning, Poland has only three types of games at a tournament. The opener that they lose, then the do or die game that they also lose, and then the game that saves their uh, honor, which they typically win being already eliminated. So yeah. What can I tell you about the other game? Spain, Sweden. It was vintage Spain, but not the good stuff. Uh, pass, 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 pass. In the end, I think uh, Spain had 10 times as many passes as Sweden had. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, uh, possession stats almost the same. Uh, very close to... You know, let me check them, actually. But I think it was... Uh, at times, it was 80%. 75 to 25%. Um, I... 
I have to, you know, they had they had not too much other chance because Sweden and and they said it right on on TV. It was the turtle tactics. You know, we know that Spain will come. Uh, so let's stand deep, uh, hunkering and uh, hope for the best. And Spain, yeah, if you pass, pass, pass without speed and precision, it's rather uh, tedious to watch. It's more like uh, a little bit like a chess game, waiting until the uh, Swedes made make the wrong move. And I I, I said it to, to 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 my wife while watching. It's very much u-shaped attacking pattern you are in the center you play it out you play a little bit forward and you go back you go on the other side you go to the other. this is how spain were playing however at least in the first half they found the occasional breakthroughs which with some luck uh they could, could have gotten a goal i mean there was a header from danny olmo that was really had a great save by olsen coke had two chances uh where maybe with a little bit more luck he could connect but i think the biggest one fell to morata where jordi alba plays a really nice pass in uh the swedish defender led let's go through he's a free on goal and you wish Gerard moreno was there because what morata uh, did there it, this needs to go at least on goal uh morata doesn't have any confidence then they would have gotten a almost perfect punishment when isaac had his first of two really really good scenes where he just cannot be taken off the ball in the box he gets the shot off uh that Llorente tries to save he goes onto the post and into une simon uh was a absolutely crazy sequence there um however then again uh from a distance almost had, had another shot so i mean in the first half at least like i i could say yes it was at times boring but the uh the payoff was there because there were some really good chances in there However, in the second half, uh, the latest when Morata had kind of this half chance, uh, the game really started to slow down. And I, I, I actually think Berg should have fixed that one uh, when Isaac again cannot be taken off the ball. He makes the crawl cross in and uh, Berg makes an absolute mess of it. There was also one, one before where Lustig uh, outside and Lustig is funny be uh, because uh, Lustig in German means funny. So. Uh, Double, double funny. Uh, when he is so clear in the box, he just needs to get, get it in and he shoots himself. I mean, uh, shoots the ball on himself. I mean, it was crazy. The biggest chance then at, at the end to win it was when finally Gerard Moreno came, came on. And um, I really think that Moreno should start uh, instead of Morata. But I guess Morata gives you a, a different set. I don't doubt uh, Luis Enrique as much as I would doubt other coaches in that because he has at least some pay, pay pedigree. Um, however, that header again uh, saved by Olsen, but it was also more towards Olsen. And it ends nil nil, first nil nil of the tour and tour to tournament. And as I said, uh, Spain falling a little bit back in old patterns. I mean, I think they're still passing in Moscow and trying to score against Russia. Uh, in many ways. So with that, the Slovaks are leading in the group at the moment and really boosted their chances. Poland looking really down and out at the moment. We also have a first glance at who is at the moment in third place, but don't give much to it and Germany hasn't even played yet. I think it's time for projections. I mean, projections for Group D is now we have the Czechs ahead of Croatia, which is not unreasonable. And I actually think if the Czechs can get out a draw against Croatia, uh, they might look good because at that point, England could well have already quali qualified. So um, I could see that the Czechs uh, finish second in this group, especially the way Croatia was disappointing. In the other group, it's still Spain. I mean, Sweden was potentially the best team, especially how, how Poland was playing yesterday. I would even call that uh, Sweden was the second best team. But at the moment, it's Slovakia in second place to be projected. Spain still very much favored uh, to uh, finish uh, first in, in this group. And you even see that despite Slovakia having a slightly higher average than Sweden uh, in terms of points, in terms of uh, placing, Sweden is more odds on to finish in second than Slovakia is. But all, all, overall for qualifying, Slovakia has a bit more chance there. Uh, which also means that now Sweden falls into a third place. Uh, no, I, I had them in third place before. It's now Poland and Slovakia that uh, finish. But yeah, uh, we have Germany, Sweden, Croatia and Ukraine in third places, which means now for the projected bracket, um, the most interesting match, and that's what I've been talking about. The Czechs will play against Slovakia in Copenhagen. That might be an interesting one. We get actually quite a few ones. I mean, to me, Italy, Austria is kind of, uh, you know, like a World Cup classic. I, I need to say then we would have England, Portugal. And again, I say second place in Group A would be something that Italy should strive for. Will be really, really, really hard 
to get there. Other than that, the Czechs would win over the Slovaks. That's the only real change going further into the tree. But yeah, we have to see how moving forward it will go. We have only the first set of games played. Um, not much changes in terms of favorites. Uh, Netherlands and Portugal, again, simulation error change a little bit the spaces. Same thing goes for Denmark and Switzerland, which really tells you they're more or less level. Um, but the Czechs and the Swedes move up now, and now you see them also back here uh, on my wall. Uh, and. Croatia draw, uh, dropping a little bit, Scotland totally dropping out, uh, and Poland also now just on the brink, not in the worst four teams. Uh, the next set of games will then be uh, tonight. We have first Hungary against Portugal, will be one with a full state stadium. I think that, that will be the most remarkable thing. And then we have probably the biggest matchup in this tournament between France and Italy. Uh, uh, no, France and Italy. <laughs> France and Germany. Yeah, four times world champion. Um, that is normally the biggest game. I'm actually quite curious. I think the Germans are at the moment a little bit underrated. Um, I could see them doing something. Maybe not against France yet, but it will be a very interesting game. That also could be if Portugal drops points against Hungary, then this game could really mean that there's a little bit of pressure off. But it has a little bit draw written all over it. But as I said, I think it's the almost the biggest possible matchup that you could have. I mean, you have the past two World Cup winners. You have a um, three-time European champion against a two-time European champion. You have a uh, four-time World Cup winner against a two-time World Cup winner. I think only Italy and Spain would kind of fit in that as well. Uh, but yeah, it is as big as it gets. Star power there, left and right. The young French guard against kind of the old German guy. I'm really uh, curious what Thomas Müller will do. And will Benzema play? up front that is i think the other one so i really want to look forward to i really hope it will live, live up to the expectations so please let me know what you thought about the games yesterday how you think the tournament will uh, go on moving forward give me a thumbs up enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel want to see more and i will talk to you soon bye hey just in case you enjoyed this video here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too also please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my sofa universe and with that have a wonderful day bye